they bend over backwards to, let us say, sanctify, yes, sanctify the Muslim community and, and the Islamic religion. And yet they are not too sensitive to vilify all Christians or all gun owners. Every speech out of these people's mouths is about how bad gun owners are. They don't trust you. Now, why do they trust all Muslims and no gun owners? What's that about? Why does Obama have such a um, caustic view of Christianity and Christians, such as, example, he brought up the Crusades a few months ago, remember that? Never talks about the Muslim crusade that is ongoing around the world. Now, again, this is a tough problem. It's a tough problem for all of us. People in this country are furious right now. They know the government is either incompetent or, let us put it to you this way, working for the other side. And I'm sure as I stand here that there are those within the government who are working for the other side. You say, well, that's paranoid. No, it isn't. 72 members of the Department of Homeland Security, 72, 72, 72 of them, 72 members of this moron's DHS are on a watch list by various divisions of the government. Do you have any idea what that means? Can you figure out all the moving parts to this deceit, this grand deceit that's going on? I think that some of them are just stunned that they've gotten away with so much for so long. 72 people in Department of Homeland Security are what? You didn't see the article? On terrorist watch list. And here's the head of the Department of Homeland Security, Jad Johnson, telling us not to vilify Muslims. Representative Steve Lynch, Democrat Massachusetts, Democrat Massachusetts, Democrat Massachusetts, said that 72 employees of this fool at DHS are listed on the U.S. terrorist watch list, according to this Democrat lawmaker. Can you believe this? Now, why is he not being forced to resign? Why? Well, you have to figure it out for yourself, boys and girls. We're living not in strange times, but eerie times. They're eerie, eerie. There's so many different ways to say what Obama is doing and not doing, and I'm sure you've heard them all. The only question remains is, what do you do about it? That's the only thing you ask yourself every day. What do you do about it to protect yourself and your families from the next Muslim terror attack? It's not going to be a Buddhist who comes into your mall with a machine gun. It's not going to be a Hindu that comes into your mall with a machine gun, etc. You get the picture. So you can't vilify all Muslims. We know that. You'd be crazy to say that. But on the other hand, people are saying it. Whether you want to hear it or not, that's what people in America are thinking, and that's what they're saying. They're saying if all the terrorists are coming out of one religion, then there must be some fundamental problem with that religion. Isn't that a logical thing to say? Let me ask you something. If you're a Buddhist, do your Buddhist teachings tell you that if you see a non-Buddhist to convert them or kill them? I have the Buddhist uh, teachings right in my hand, the teaching of Buddha. I don't see anything in the Buddhist Bible, so to speak, because there is no Bible. It's a collection of sayings. There's no leader of Buddhism. There's no head guy. It's sayings. The theory of mind only in the real state of things. To a man a river seems like a river, but to a hungry demon which sees fire and water, it may seem to be like fire. Therefore, to speak to a man about a river existing would have some sense, but to the demon it would have no meaning. In like manner, it can be said that things are like illusions. They can be said neither to be existent nor non-existent. And so that's Buddhism. It doesn't talk anything about the infidel, about uh, cutting the throat of the infidel, about killing the infidel, about charging the infidel tax. It doesn't talk about mutilating young girls to deny them sexual gratification. Nothing in this Buddhist teaching does that. Now let's pick up the next religious book and the next and the next and the next until we all come with our breath listness to the one book that teaches things that you cannot believe are, are even being put in print these days. So you say, well, most Muslims don't believe that. No, they don't. So what do you do with those who do? Like the two who machine gun the people last week in uh, California. He read the book cover to cover. She read the book cover to cover over and over and over and over again, brainwashing themselves with the hatred 
So if the government says, and rightly so, you can't vilify all Muslims for the acts of a very small number, although the small number is getting a little larger uh, over the uh, last days and months and years, seems to be metastasizing under Mr. Hussein Obama. Doesn't seem to be contained. The virus is spreading. The cancer is spreading around the world. It is not being contained. And so the question comes back to what do we do about it? Now, we all are stymied by our freedoms, and we are imprisoned by this Trojan horse of our freedoms. Freedom of religion, freedom of speech, Second Amendment. We all love these amendments, don't we? And, of course, we want them applied to ourselves, but not to others. That's the problem. We like our freedom of religion because our religion doesn't teach hatred and murder. But you can't then apply it only to Muslims because their book does teach hatred and murder. I'm not making it up. I wouldn't say it. 132 places it calls for uh, hurting the infidel. And so we're all suffering, not knowing what to do, so we're buying guns. Gun stocks soar. Smith & Wesson highest sales since 07. Sheriff says licensed owners have a responsibility to carry. Document reveals ISIS plot for world domination in chilling detail. Did you hear my guest on Friday, Walid Shobat, a man who used to uh, be a member of a terrorist group called uh, the Palestine Liberation Organization? Did you hear what he said on the show when I asked him, how does this end? He said, it doesn't end until millions of us are dead. He said, that's the only way anything will change in this country of ours. You know from having talked to your liberal relatives and liberal friends on a daily basis, that they are brainwashed and they're ignoramuses, and nothing will change their mind. They don't even know about San Bernardino. It wasn't even a blip, maybe a blip, on their mental landscape last week. They see no evil, they hear no evil, they don't connect it to Islam, they don't connect it to individuals, they don't want to know it's connected to jihad and a worldwide war. They don't care. That is the difference between this generation and the generation that defeated Hitler. Yes, you see, America was a fun-loving nation in the 1930s, I read, and Hitler thought he could conquer America as well. They used to laugh. He had trained his boys to kill from birth. Did you know the Hitler youth were trained very much like the Palestinians are training their youth right now? Trained to hate, trained to kill, trained to murder, trained to, trained to burn, trained to not feel anything while they take human life. Hitler did that with his, with his Hitler youth. Did you know that? And so, therefore, they emboldened themselves, saying, look at those weak British. Look at those weak Americans. Look at those weak French. They'll never fight back. Well, thank God Hitler was wrong. Thank God Hitler was wrong, because the West did fight back, and they crushed him forever. They destroyed the Thousand Year Reich. So, once again, we're facing a terrorist enemy who thinks that we're weak and we will not fight back. And they're wrong. We will fight back. If we can survive the plague of Barack, Barack Obama, if we can survive the plague of the psychosis of liberalism another year, if we can survive it, and if that Harrod and Hillary Clinton is found out to be what she is, which is a continuation of him in a skirt, that's just two ifs, we will defeat them. They will be destroyed. I can guarantee you as I stand here, the world will not put up with this forever. And it was only because of Russia that stood up to them that suddenly the British are now bombing them, the French are now bombing them. Not because of Obama, it was because of Putin, the man that Obama hates, that there's an actual air war against some, and I say some, of the targets of this ISIS. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth and financial future. Call 1-800-289-26. So the liberals are having an orgy about Donald Trump saying, make America hate again. Daily News is running a around-the-clock campaign against him, obviously because uh, they're jealous of him. And the same with Hollywood. They hate Trump. So today Trump calls for the complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. Just did that. Put out a sheet, released a sheet. And he pointed to a, t a poll from the Center for Security Policy to show that segments of the Muslim population detest Americans. According to Pew Research, among others, there is great hatred towards Americans by large segments of the Muslim population. 
Most recently, a poll from the Center for Security Policy released data showing, quote, 25% of those polled agree that violence against Americans here in the United States is justified as a part of the global jihad. And 51% of those Muslims polled agree that, uh, those polled agree that Muslims in America should have the choice of being governed according to Sharia. So Trump comes out and says enough is enough. And he said the hatred is beyond comprehension. And he said we've got to uh, understand radical Islam before allowing Muslims into the country. And moreover, the article says Muslim immigrants, migrants tend to be unskilled, heavily reliant on taxpayer-funded welfare, reluctant to integrate into American society, on, are under intense internal pressure to preserve their own mix of religion, culture, and politics, are relatively likely to join jihad. Fifty-six Muslims were indicted on jihad charges in the first 11 months of 2015 and to support pro-jihad political groups. And yet, you're not going to believe this, they want to bring in 6.2 million of them by 2030. A record 680,000 migrants from Muslim countries were granted green cards from 09 to 13 under Barry. Also, 2 million people from Muslim-majority countries were admitted to the U.S. since the jihad atrocity on 9-11. So, this conversation is happening... I'm a little different than Donald because I said point number two of 40 actions to save America in government zero. I say close the borders completely for seven years, but I don't single out any religion or any ethnic group. I, I have a blanket opinion. It shouldn't be aimed at Muslims. I would say nobody comes in for seven years. We have had unprecedented immigration into this country, not just in terms of numbers, but of foreign and even hostile cultures. I write we need time to assimilate the immigrants we have. Just as we did the waves of immigrants at the beginning of the last century. And I said at the end of seven years, evaluate our capacity for normalizing immigration with nationalist priorities as I've described. That is point two of the 40 actions to save America in government zero. And I think that my point is smarter than saying ban Muslims because I'd say ban everyone from entering the country. We don't, we don't need immigrants. It's a lie to say that we need immigrants, that they refresh the society. That's a lie. The reason that Silicon Valley wants them is for cheaper labor. There are IT workers in the country. Moreover, all of these unemployed kids who are rioting around the country...